Welcome to Statesman, the podcast where we explore all 50 states with our five senses. If you've come here for history, we'll give you almost none. This is a bonus episode, so all of this will be half-baked opinion that is never intended to harm or offend anyone. Today, we paint a picture of conjoined twins separated by an accident of medicine known as the Civil War. But it's not the only time two twins of this podcast have been created and thusly separated or even destroyed by failures in the natural order of things. For this 24,230 square mile gland nested in the thick ventricle of the Appalachia has already been comedically inflated and put to electronic signals in the form of a .wav file for this very podcast. But like all of humankind's greatest follies, they crash and burn with the same power in which they rose. Much like when Icarus donned his wings and flew towards the sun against his knowledgeable father Daedalus, the episode of the Mountain State with very special guest, artist, and skateboarder O.J. Hayes was thrust into the ether by a malfunctioning hard drive without the possibility of return. And like for all of us laboring mortals on this abyssal plane of existence, sometimes a re-record with the same guest just won't work out. Unlike the candle company that shall not be named because it will not return our emails, God has shown its malicious contortion of a corpus in smiting the Statesman podcast. Fine, you silly God. I've now written this intro three separate times. You've had your tricks and laughs, but it will not stop us from climbing Spruce Knob, the highest elevation in the land, and spitting into your thousand-toothed maw. And we will scream, Montani Semper Liberi, Mountaineers are always free, as we welcome you to No Guest West Virginia. I'm your older statesman, Tim Ferrari, along with my junior statesman, Anthony Rossi. I-O-U-W-V-A. And Stuart Highcar. West Virginia, uh, uh, I guess we lost an ep? Yeah, lost a fucking episode. God, it was it had to happen to us eventually. As podcasters do, this is a rite of passage of some sort. And it was, no joke, legitimately our longest episode. We were at this <laughs> table for like two and a half hours with the elusive O.J. Hayes, who was an amazing guest. Yeah. Awesome get. And, of course, it had to fail within the last five seconds. And no one's to blame. It was almost as if it was never meant to happen. Because for, like, six oh, weeks yeah. straight, we we were trying to get O.J. on the podcast. Has him? He's the only person that we know from West Virginia. And it took, like, six weeks of, like, rescheduling and, like, trying to find a time. And then... We finally did it, and two hours into the record, it all went kaputty. Yeah, I mean, do we want to... Uh, uh, it's such a shame because of uh, all of the incredible content that was on this missing episode that our listeners just will never get to hear about, you it, know? It probably is our funniest episode of all time. Easily. So easily is it the funniest episode we've ever done. It's just a shame that our listeners will like won't be able to uh, finally achieve that eight-pack of an ab that we've been trying mm. to, uh, you know, bestow upon all of our listeners by laughing. But, but at some point in the future, uh, at least I hope... Hope we'll be able to have OJ back on the podcast and yeah. he can tell us all about his incredible stories, designing art for Chicago artists and skateboarding and living in the WVA. You know, he's an incredible guy. Look him up online, follow him, buy his stickers. He's very, very nice. And it, losing the episode was uh, of no fault of his. In fact, I think the fault goes straight to the devil in yeah. hell. Fuck you, devil. <laughs> Fuck the devil. We we here on the Statesman podcast will never endorse the devil. Uh, yeah, but you know who is endorsing the devil? Seems like every GOP member of the house. Ayo. <laughs> See, See. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can all, you can find OJ Hayes. I know that the, he's not going to be on the podcast, but you can find him on Instagram at OJ. Hayes, he's H A Y S. He's never coming back. Well, he might. I mean, he might come back, but like you <laughs> Not know, this season. Yeah, we might as well give out <laughs> his like social media information and his address and all the stuff that you know we really need to give out. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll make it my mission to get him back. But you know, we don't we don't have to keep talking about a lost episode because we're recording an episode right now. That's right, and we can start talking about the show Lost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The show <laughs> lost. Jack. Ooh, yeah, Jack. Sawyer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, what? Who else? Charlie. Who is the guy who drowned? 
and put his hand against the window and it said like, I don't know. I saw a Desmond? Meme. Yes. Yeah. No, wait, no, that was Charlie. Wait, Charlie. He's Mary from uh, Lord of the Rings, right? That's yes. right. So that was Charlie. Then there's Desmond. And then... And if I'm not mistaken, Desmond worked a trolley in the marketplace. Mm, what? What? Sorry, that was a Beatles reference. Uh, I, I don't know if it was <laughs> I don't know the Beatles. Yo, we're forgetting Huey. Hurley, guys. Hurley. <laughs> Hurley God, yeah. not just my favorite member of the of the Lost cast, but also my favorite Weezer album. <laughs> Lock. <laughs> uh, you know, we have to, while this is a pretty unconventional episode because we technically don't have a guest, uh, I, we still need to ask, guys, how was your week? Oh, wow. I guess I'll go ahead and start. L -l -l long, man. It was a long week going to work every day, coming out of work and going to do comedy in basements, you know? Do a lot of rehearsals these days, do a lot of improv comedy. And of course, I've been watching, just like everybody else, the Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. We're really going to get into it. Yeah. I hear you guys have some beef regarding the Mandalorian. I, <laughs> I was not in the home yesterday during this argument. I fear it came to blows. Tim and I beat the shit out of each other. I lost. I got my face pushed into the mud. I started breathing mud. I was I was I thought I would die over my opinions about Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian. But maybe this isn't the time to get into it. Baby Yoda is boring. <gasps> I think Baby Yoda <laughs> is cute. I think Baby Yoda is one of the cutest characters to ever be on television. Okay, who's your number two? Uh, uh, maybe uh, Maggie from The Simpsons. I was cute. about to say Maggie. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's almost like we only have a few points of reference between us all. <laughs> a few points of reference, much like the few points of Maggie's hair. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing with that. No, that was really, really good. And speaking of points, how about the points of a mountain? That's right. West Virginia, full of them. Uh, and we would have learned so much about them had we met the infamous lost character, the mad mountain man, Mr. Marcus Maxwell. But for listeners at home, that's just a little tease. Just like I was teasing Anthony when I asked him, how was your week this week? My week was pretty good. <laughs> Got, uh, listeners at home, you did not miss out on this character. He was terrible. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> it was really, really bad. <laughs> we don't know that. OJ definitely was uncomfortable with him. <laughs> I've never seen a guest like with, with such a visible desire to leave <laughs> as OJ in that moment. I just want to clear it up. I met OJ five minutes before record and five minutes into the episode. This character, in quotes, appeared in a cowboy hat and shades and was screaming at him. And boy, the, <laughs> he looked so unhappy. Yeah, it. it was awful. But back to the real important meat of the podcast. Mm -hmm. My week was wonderful. Uh, I've applied for a promotion at work. I probably shouldn't be saying this on the podcast in case I don't get it. But hey, you know, shit happens. I won't be upset if I don't get it. At least I put myself out there and that's pushing myself in a positive direction. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And congratulations on doing that promotion. That's like big moves. Absolutely. It can be Thank scary you. to put yourself into uh, waters that you don't know or understand. And sometimes you just got to dive in. Oh, yeah, baby. And Tim, I'm excited. We've got a show coming up tonight. Pause tonight at Kip Studios. Yeah, it'll be long gone after this episode is released. But yeah, we're going to have probably the hottest pasta night we've ever had. Well, yeah. it, it won't be totally gone because it'll be the talk of the town for the next couple of months, right? That's actually right. It's going to burn a hole in the population of Chicago's memories and minds, and we will be thrust into famedom. Hmm. You know, <laughs> my week was just fine. I just worked a lot, and that was it. I had round two of therapy with a person that I'm seeing for the second time. Oh, new therapist. Always scary. Super scary. Super yeah. scary. He's a very, very nice guy. Not sure how well we're melding together right now, but you know what? Kevin, if you're listening, you're cool. <laughs> I want to talk to you, Tim, and we don't have to get into that much detail about it if you don't want. I have uh, never been with a male therapist. I, I don't know why. Some people prefer certain therapists over others. I definitely prefer a, a, a female voice of reason when I'm I'm spouting about my particular mental totally. problems. How do you feel about it? I have now, this is the second time that I've seen a guy consecutively. Uh, so I saw, I saw Antonio before a couple months ago. Uh, and then I saw Kevin now. And um, before Antonio, I was seeing Sarah and she was the best one. And I think the thing with guys for me is that like, I'm 
afraid that they're going to relate to me too much as a guy and become or like seem too sympathetic and I'm not going to get like a real mm. opinion out of them, like a real unfiltered opinion. You're worried that they're just going to ask for your gamer tag. Yeah, go ask for my gamer tag. What's up with how f- far that pigskin was thrown in that last game of FB? Mm, you know what I'm saying? We're all guys here. Come on, let's all look at our sacks. Yeah. Anthony, what about you? Are you in therapy? I'm not in therapy currently. I've, ne- I've never been in therapy yet so far, but I think that it's amazing. And I, I've seen so many of my friends uh, and, and family helped out by it. And I think it's really wonderful. And I think that it's it's for everyone. If you're if you're going through something, or if, even if you're not going through something, and you think that you could use um, use the opportunity to talk to somebody, I think I would encourage everybody to go get a therapist. It's wild that we get rid of a guest, and suddenly this becomes a very mental health positive podcast. You know, mm-hmm. maybe every week we should start a new segment called Therapy Sherapy. <laughs> where we we talk about revelations we've had this week when talking with mental health professionals. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Seems if that, if positive. That, yeah. If that will help you have a breakthrough, <laughs> you can certainly have a therapy therapy corner. Uh, well, you know, we've talked about ourselves a lot. And uh, while this technically is no guest West Virginia or no guest Virginia, what? we still... <laughs> We still technically we still have somebody on the other end of our fourth mic. And of course, he's been in the room pretty much since the start of this whole thing. In fact, since the start of this whole thing, please welcome our super producer, Camden Stacy. Hey, guys, what's going on? Whoa, Uh, Camden just (laughs) triggered his own sound effect. You know it. And uh, (laughs) Anthony, I hope that when the powers that be see your application for your promotion, that they are impressed, Virginia. Wow. <laughs> a true blessing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've been blessed, Virginia. <laughs> Camden, oh boy. Ha- have you ever been to West Virginia before? I've driven through twice. Grew up in Ohio myself, as has been mentioned oh, uh, yeah. in my previous appearances on the pod. Um, but yeah, I have I've I've technically been there. Let, let me get this straight. You were were you born in Ohio? I was not. I was born in the Detroit, Michigan area. Right. But you did tell us that you were raised from a very young age at the half court line in the Quicken Loans Arena. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Any, I, uh, I, can, I can call LeBron, you know, like you have really close family friends who are like uncles and aunts. Oh, uh, that's Uncle LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're in Space Jam too, Camden. Hell yeah. <laughs> what part of West Virginia were you in? Were you oh, like on the highways? So yeah, I would have driven <laughs> driven through the northern part, actually cut through that top panhandle where uh, Mr. O.J. Hayes is from. Ah, nice. Yeah. You might have um, even bumped into him while he was grinding in the median. Perhaps he is a, he's a skateboarder. I don't know. No, you know that'll uh, that'll probably miss our listeners. <laughs> so I have a I've I've family in the Hampton, Virginia Beach area of Vir- of Virginia, Virginia, and we we've driven through to see them before. You know, I've stayed in a Hampton Inn before. Pretty good time. Pretty family atmosphere. I put Hamp I put the Hampton Inn high up on the on my list of three star hotels for All sure. All right, Red Roof Inn above or below it. Technically above, because <laughs> it's a roof. No, I right? get it. All right, <laughs> the only <laughs> red roof that I know is the White House. Oh damn! <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> we need a guest here so we have someone to be embarrassed by. Yeah, I know. We, we have too much disgusting power in this room. It's, it's awful. So indulgent. It's so rich. By the end of this, oh. we're all gonna have gout. Um, uh, what are we doing today? Uh, I, you know, I, I honestly don't know. We, it bef- you know, we had talked about what we're going to be doing for West Virginia and, uh, uh, we decided to what create a couple of games based on the name West Virginia uh, to play instead of exploring the state through the five senses. Well, instead, we're going to be exploring the state with our sense of of play. You know, we're going uh-huh. to we're mm-hmm. going to bring some game theory into the state and the <laughs> podcast as a whole. Right? Do you guys have game? Oh, I, I mean, I have I, a game ready. No, 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 no. Do you have game? Oh, I went to a party recently and there was this person who hit on me the hardest anybody who has ever hit on me in their entire life. And it was the most intimidating thing. So, no, I have no game. Oh, shame, shame. (laughs) I was next. I was so close to just pee in my pants. That would. mm, mm. Okay, well. (laughs) Did you you go to your your go to talking point? 
video games. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tim. Did you bring up any RPGs with this lady? Yep. I only talked about uh, Skyrim, and I talked about Daedric Weapons. Hey, we could we could spend about an hour of this pod going in on that train if you want to. What's on, when you when you start a new campaign in Skyrim? Do you go immediately to do the Golden Claw quest to level up your character? Uh, yes. Honestly, I do the first cave and then I go all out. Hell yeah! Well, we'll be playing a quest later in the. Uh, we'll have a quest later in the Ooh. episode, but um. Every so, all three of us have assembled a game, uh, a little wordplay game based on the word West. So, uh, what you guys want to go around and say what your games are called? And uh, I think so. Let and let's do it in order of how they'll be played. So, my game will be making uh, the first arrival on the scene, and it will be called Test Virginia. Wow. Anthony, what's your game called? Well, usually Stu handles the music segment, but today. I'm going to be wrangling you folks down to Fest, Virginia. Whoa, sounds like a party. And me, we're going right to Skyrim to play Quest, Virginia. <laughs> so why don't we explore West Virginia with these three games? And uh, Stuart, why don't you take Test, Virginia away? Absolutely. Test, Virginia. In the form of a standardized test, I'm going to walk you boys through the history of of West Virginia. Now, as the test proctorologist, I will be talking, <laughs> I'll be walking <laughs> you two through the test and you will hereby refer to me only as Mr. Test Boy. Is that understood? Yes, y Mr. Test Boy. Yes, Mr. Test Boy. Thank you. Now, this test is broken up into three sections, history, culture, and artistic expression. Wait, you're a proctorologist, wouldn't you be Dr. Test Boy? Yes. <laughs> From here on out, you will refer to me as Dr. Test Boy. You, is that understood? Yes, Dr. Test Boy. Yes, Dr. Test Boy. Now, each segment counts for about 11 points of your final grade, except for artistic expression, which counts for 178 points. Any questions before we begin, begin section one of the test? No, no Dr. Dr. Test, test Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Section one, history. This section is made up of multiple choice questions. I will only give you the answer, uh, the like the answer choices after you buzz in by saying West is best. Oh my God. After which the answers will be given and your answer will be graded. Any questions before we begin? No, no Dr. Dr. Test, Test Boy. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, Dr. Test Boy has shared his, uh, his answers with me so that I can trigger sound effects naturally. You can refer to me as Mr. Quiz Lad. <laughs> Mr. Jesus Quiz Lad. Christ. <laughs> You'll show some hey. respect to Mr. You're Quiz right. Lad. Right. Sorry, well, Mr. Quiz Lad. He came in on the weekend to print these tests. <laughs> Why don't you call me... <laughs> Why don't you call me uh, Mr. Taker? <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta move on with this game, Stu. Yikes. Okay, question number one. Remember, guys, West is best is your buzz-in keyword. Right. When settlers discovered the land, 100% of West Virginia was forest. What percentage of West Virginia is covered by forest today? Oh, West hmm. is best. Anthony, your options are 45%, 75%, or 83%. I'm going to say B. 75%? Yes. Correct! Wow, nice, Anthony. Nice. Really great work, Anthony. Hey, my name's not Anthony. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Taker. T yeah. <laughs> First name under, last name Taker. <laughs> and Tim, I assume you're Mr. Keeper, Mr. Crip Keeper. Uh, yes, Mr. Dr. Test Lab. Thank Dr. You. Test Boy. No, thank, oh, thank you very much. Now, question number two. Which variety of yellow apple is native to West Virginia, originating in 1775? West is best. Oh, Tim, you just got in. Now your options are the golden delicious, the sour canary, or the pee pee fruit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I only know one. I'll say the golden delicious. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you got it. The pee pee fruit, eh? Yep. Unfortunately, uh, the pee pee fruit, not an apple. It's a berry. 
Wait, what? It's Question action- number three. <laughs> Finish West Virginia's state motto. Mountaineers are always blank is the missing word. You can buzz in at any moment and I'll give you the missing words. Uh, West is best. Anthony, you definitely got in first. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> All right, didn't even read the options. He squint, sk- skipped straight to the damn answer. Listen, that one I knew off the top of my head from Tim's intro. I'm surprised he couldn't beat me to it. Yeah, speaking of top of the head, Tim, you were scratching yours on that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not very good at taking tests. Well, this next question might be right up your alley. Number four, the first iron furnace west of the Alleghenies was built in 1794. But who built it? Uh, West is best. I have no choice. Wow, we're going back and forth. This is a classic game. Tim, your choices are Daniel Boone, Peter Tarr, or Senator Tangor Crumps. (laughs) Uh, Okay, Uh, who is the second guy? Uh, It's Daniel Boone, Peter Tarr, or Senator Tangor Crumps. I'll go with I'll go with Peter Tarr. Wow, Wow. I cannot believe this is. Sang- what is this? Sangor Crump? Senator Tangor Crump. Is that a is that a, a senator from Naboo? You would see him in <laughs> The Mandalorian if you, if you enjoyed the show a little bit more. But we'll skip right to question number five. Who was Bailey Brown? West is best. <laughs> oh, Anthony, just under the wire. I can't believe it. You guys are neck and neck. Now, was Bailey Brown the first man to die in the Civil War? the first man to successfully mechanize a lumber mill, or the first man to see the movie First Man? I'm going to say <laughs> A. <laughs> Correct! Nice! I can't wow. believe this. I've got some star students. This little <laughs> test proctor is very, very impressed. This is the best I've ever done on any test in my life. <laughs> and This is a standardized test. We could go to Harvard with these kind of scores so far. <laughs> Good point. Tim, Anthony, the final question of round one. Chester Merriman was the youngest soldier enlisted to World War I. How old was he? West is best. Whoa, what the fuck, Anthony? Anthony got in. Anthony, was he 14 years old, 13 years old, 12 years old, or was he zero years old, still unborn, fighting as a fetus inside the womb of his mother, who was unfortunately also dragged into the war front? I'm going to say C, 12 years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, idiot. Tim, you have a chance to steal. Was he 14, 13, or was he zero years old, still unborn fighting as a fetus inside the womb of his mother who was unfortunately also dragged to the war front? I'm pricing, I'm prices is writing 13. Oh. <laughs> no, he was 14. God damn it. Damn. <laughs> Just like a real standardized test, the answer's made to confuse you and make you do worse. Mm. (laughs) Well, guys, at the end of that round, Anthony has a small lead ahead of Tim. Anthony, three points. Tim, only two. You know what? That's fine. Anthony, we roomed together in college, but maybe you're going to get into the better school and you're going to leave me behind to go to a state school. Yeah, everybody's told me that I'm smarter than Tim as long as I've known him. (laughs) It's been well known that I'm the smart one between us. <laughs> Who's telling you that? Uh, uh, the mirror. <laughs> oh, <Vinny>. gotcha. <laughs> Vinny. Vinny. <laughs> All right, guys, after a short break of chewy bars and gum, we're going to come back in for section two of the standardized test, the culture section. Whoa, there's more to the test. <laughs> there are three sections, as I made clear in the beginning. History, <laughs> culture, and artistic expression. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. Section two. This section takes place in the traditional rhyming form. Now, we'll go back and forth between you two, where I will give you the first part of a rhyming cultural fact, and you'll have to finish the rhyme for points. Oh, so we're doing wait, wait, don't tell me bits now. Uh, hey, wait, wait, shut the fuck up, man. (laughs) Okay. All right, you know what? I'll take points off you if you want. No. Uh, now, okay. number one, and we'll start with Tim because he <laughs> is in the... Wait, I thought it was a buzz-in scenario. No, nah, part one was a buzz-in. I've removed your buzzers. This uh, is now back and forth okay, to cool. give you a chance to catch up. Wow, thank you. Now, Tim, Berkeley Springs is the place for Pa. He's way too tense. He needs a 
blank. Pa, um, he needs a a, a saw. Oh, <laughs> no, you idiot. A spa, home of the, uh, you see, so Berkeley Springs was home of the first spa in America, <laughs> opened in 1756. Yeah, Tim, come on. What? You fucking idiot. God damn it. <laughs> Anthony, you're next. Yes. A warm, homey fire is good for the soul, but it's dangerous in this house made of coal. Wow. wow. Anthony, coal is right. The coal house was made entirely out of coal in 1961 and is in uh, West Virginia, famously. That's a really, really trashy idea. That's a bad idea, y'all. What do you mean? You couldn't walk around the house in your white socks for sure. Yeah, and that's all I like to wear on my feet when I'm home. You're I a sock them. boy. Mm -hmm. I've wear... seen you getting out of the shower. Yeah. Socks on. <laughs> yeah. I need those wet feet. I love the feeling of a nice wet sock. All right. Well, Anthony, you have four points to Tim's two. Tim, I hope you get this right. I'm going to I'm going to community college. A helpful slogan can strike a chord written on this bill of blank. Can you say it again? A helpful slogan can strike a chord written on this bill of blank. Uh, <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, this bill, is a gimme. Bill of uh, Ford. Oh, come on, Tim. A helpful slogan can strike a chord written on this bill of board. Billboards. You see, outdoor <laughs> advertising was invented in West Virginia in Wheeling in 1908. I am wet with sweat right now. <laughs> you should be, man. You're failing out of the test. You'll I never go to state school. This. You're wet right now? I am let's, so wet. Let's trade socks. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anthony, before you take off those socks, I've got another rhyme for you. Oh, I'm ready. A delicious treat could be an ice cream float, but if you want to stay dry, you can use a boat. Eh, steamboat. The first the steamboat <laughs> launched in West Virginia in 1787. I'm going to give Anthony the point there, but only because Tim was so poor in this segment. <laughs> so, Anthony, you have five points. Tim, only two. But remember, the final section of this test, artistic expression, is where the winner will really be decided. Sort of like the final round of Quiplash, The Last Lash. Uh, the Last Lash, the meaningless round of uh, <laughs> of that game, unless you play it by our house rules. Yeah, you know, the perfect guest we could have invited on today, Schmitty from <laughs> Quiplash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Artistic expression. Now, this segment is a free-form open response. You'll choose one subject from the provided list and deliver the outline to a thrilling psychosexual novel revolving around this subject. Remember to give me a beginning, middle, and end. Any questions? Well, yeah. No, I guess not. Okay, Tim should go first. <laughs> Tim should obviously go yeah. first because he's in, you know, I'm so last prepared. place. Now, Tim, I'm going to show you a list of four things. Only read out loud the one that you will be choosing for your psychosexual thriller novel? Uh, I will choose, uh, I'll choose mountaineering. That's hot. Mountaineering, ooh. Not only is it in the slate state slogan, but um, it's number one on the charts, just like Logan. Paul, that is. Mm. Got well, his ass kicked by KSI. <laughs> hell yeah, we're KSI fans in this house, baby. <laughs> um, Tim? What do I gotta do? Whenever you're ready, deliver me the outline to a thrilling psychosexual novel. Okay. Revolving around the subject of mountaineering. Sure. Melvin was a mountaineer. He lived in the mountains underneath a big pile of leaves, and he was cold. But one day he got a sense of inspiration. You know, one I'm going to trek outside of my big pile of leaves and walk down the mountain. But walking down a mountain is not so easy for a mountaineer. A mountaineer carries many, many pounds of weight, 50 plus, maybe even 100. But Melvin was a smart person, so he decided to swing from vine to vine down Spruce Knob and make it to the bottom. But when he got to the bottom, he noticed that the town below was just infested with nothing but the slimiest people in the world. <gasps> He had so much sex that he came out of his eyes. Whoa. And when he trekked back up the mountain, he was 100 pounds lighter from the amount of cum that he had lost. He went <laughs> underneath his big pile of leaves and 
came even more, losing another 50 pounds before he was nothing but a big pile of blood and flesh. And what is a man but a pile of blood, flesh and cum? Well, Melvin quickly became not a man. He became just matter. Wow. That was worth a hundred points. Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> Easy. Yeah, look, I wanted to hate the story, but once he asked the question, what is a man? I understood the theme of the novel and I actually really, really enjoyed it. See, it's kind of like that kid orgy at the end of it. It's more like symbolic than it is gross and weird. Also, Tim, you have a raging cocaine problem that's helping you write. Oh, I, do, I, I forgot. I forgot that I wrote that. I was in the 80s. Well, Anthony, you're now... 95 points behind Tim. Oh, boy. I hope you can make it up with one of the other subjects on this list. Now, take your time. There's three on there. You'll only be choosing one, and you'll have to tell me the beginning, middle, and end of a thrilling psychosexual novel. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select The Mothman. Ooh, Ooh. the local legend of The Mothman, seen all across West Virginia, yes? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I had a, a decent amount of research done on the Mothman uh, for our lost episode. I had I had a whole extensive page of notes, which I'm not going to consult during this entire idea generation. So sorry if my facts are a little off here, folks. All right. Let's lose ourselves in the mouth of the Mothman. Ooh. His has a title. After... The bridge collapsed. Men and women and all types of villagers from the surrounding area went out to take a look and see if they could spot the devious creature that caused the bridge to collapse. But little did they know, they would find love. (gasps) They found a clutch of eggs that quickly (laughs) burst into pansexual larvae that were were hungry for flesh. Oh, And it just instantly turned into a large orgy. And everyone was consenting and loving and busting. (laughs) But finally, (laughs) Papa Moth came back to find everyone was having a little too much fun without him. And he descended (laughs) on the whole town and... Whipped out the largest penis of them all. <laughs> oh my and eventually, mm-hmm. everyone was satisfied and they all fell asleep cuddling. Wow. Wow. A happy story. Let me just get this straight. Tim, I understand the theme of your novel was to see the biological consistency of all human beings beyond our motion attitude. Uh, belief. Yeah, it was that deep. Anthony, the theme of yours seems to be don't have sex without uh, the dominant male around. I, look, I I have no idea. I I wish I could have <laughs> just I wish I could have just passed, but I was put on the spot. This is a standardized test. We can't just walk out. Unfortunately, of the room. it's standardized, and these answers will go through a machine, and that will grade Listen, your writing. Yeah, I'm not some type of horn dog that's going to sit here and write erotica for you to jack it to the second hey, we hit stop. But you are a bit of a corn dog, isn't that right? <sighs> I mean, we were we were talking about Stu ripping off. Wait, wait, don't tell me. When I heard the bridge came crashing down in the the Mothman's world and. The villagers' world were going to collide. I thought you were going to start ripping off Shape of Water. <laughs> <laughs> and the Mothman was going to find love with someone right. he couldn't even communicate. <laughs> okay, oh, all right. Christ. We have very obviously reached the end of this game, and I have loaded both your scantrons into our massive machine. Its whirring wheels and little gears are telling me which of you is going to be the winner, and. Uh, The results have been printed out for me. Tim, you finished with an astounding 102 points. Wow. Wow. I might actually be going to a good school. No, Anthony, 105. 
Yeah, Tim, that's what you get for saying community colleges aren't good schools. No, they are good schools. <laughs> they provide it's quality education to lots of people across the United States who class as fuck. They do. I swallow my tongue, but I just had so many more aspirations for myself. Unfortunately, there will be no college for you, Tim. Only no. a gutter where you'll find yourself bloodied and beaten at the end of every night. Maybe I'll be living the life of my own character in my own novel, Melvin the Cumsack. Oh, we don't need to bring this guy up anymore. You know, we lost the wrong episode. <laughs> <laughs> this should definitely be the lost episode. This uh, is we're not done crazy. yet. Who knows? Yeah. Anything could happen. We still have two more games to go. Stu, that was <laughs> that was an incredible test, Virginia. Uh, I will not be going to school after this, but Anthony will excel to the top of the world and perhaps become the world's first trillionaire. Uh, but we're going to move on to our next game where we explore West Virginia, not with a test, but with a fest. Anthony? Oh yeah, baby, it's time for Fest Virginia. Y'all like music? Yeah. Y'all like standing outside? Ooh, I love it. Y'all like sweating and dressing up? Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome to Fest Virginia. Ooh! Yay. I'm gonna show you some names of acts from 2019's Mountain Music Festival mixed up with some acts that I have mischievously added. Oh, ho, ho. So mm. I present to you first this sheet of paper, the stage. <gasps> <laughs> okay, it's a box. Uh, it's a it's an eight by eleven piece of paper with a box drawn inside, and it, inside the box it says the stage. If I didn't know any better, I would say Anthony took this right out of the printer behind him, but I doubt <laughs> it. It looks almost <laughs> too good. Nope, I put a lot of hard work into that. All right, y'all. So I'm going to hand out some sheets of paper to each of you. Camden, here's a stack for you. Stu, here's a stack for you. Okay. Timmy, here's a stack for you. Now, all in all, there are nine real acts that belong on this stage. <clears throat> so I'm going to need you guys to put your heads and your answers together to come up with this lineup. Identify the real act. Now, I just want to be uh, totally clear in this that... These are, are we have to put acts on the stage that have performed in this particular West Virginia music festival? Yes, and of course, that's the Mountain Music Festival, an annual festival at Ace Adventure Resort in West Virginia. What the fuck? Are you being paid to talk about this festival? Now, Don't worry about my finances. Mm. I did get a blank piece of paper. Is that a wild card? Yes. Uh, no, throw that away. It's okay. useless. <laughs> Damn. Well, could have put my name on All there. All right. Well, I, I think I can start. There's definitely one artist in my hand who I know for sure deserves to be on the stage, and that is the incomparable DJ Shh. Um, I, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's sitting at the table with us now. Camden, um, I know I've never you, – you might know him. I've never seen you guys in the same room, though. That's interesting. Yeah, there, um, there are rumors that uh, he might be working under several pseudonyms. <gasps> including but not limited to Marshmallow, <laughs> <laughs> who's also been mentioned on this podcast. Uh, um, okay, well, I push on the stage. So, Camden, why don't you pick an artist to put on the stage next? So I'm going to go with the only country artist I believe is in my hands uh, that would make sense for a music festival in West Virginia, Tim McGraw. Okay, ah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Roll okay. With McGraw. That makes sense. Yeah. I would believe that he would play. All right. Now, do you think he's headlining or do you think DJ Sh is headlining? Highly likely <laughs> that Tim McGraw is headlining over Boo. Shush. Boo. Shush. Boo. For sure. <laughs> well, I've got a pretty good act in front of me that I can put on the stage. And uh -huh. um, if you've never heard of this artist, you ought to hear his claws and the way that he snaps because it's Badge the Badger. <laughs> Oh, okay. Nice. Definitely haven't heard of that person. Well, because um, he's not a person. He's an animal. That's a right. Badger. A badger. A badge. badger. Well, I think I'm going to put this next artist on the stage as well. Remember, <laughs> this is kind of what a badger might uh, love to enjoy at dinner. It's groundhog gravy. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Anthony, we've put the first four of our artists, uh, artists on the stage. Are we playing this game correctly? Um, not particularly. <laughs> I was going to suggest that you will go through and share your answers with each other and then start picking away that way. But if you want to go around one by one without revealing all of your answers and deciding together, that's fine too. 
Hmm. You hmm. know, and, and honestly, I'll, t- I'll take that. That's on me. <laughs> I, I should have explained the rules better like you painstakingly <laughs> did during your far too long game. Well, you know, I explained too much. You explained too little. Maybe our third game will be explained just enough. Well, I mean, maybe that's a great thing. You know, a test needs instruction. A fest is a party. And yeah. parties are always fun where they've got no rules. No rules. Baby. Okay. So why don't we, well, I'm going to take a little bit of control of the reins. Are there any acts on the board here that were placed by someone that you might not agree with and you think should be removed? Ooh, now that's fun. I personally think Tim McGraw should be stricken from the stage. Okay. <laughs> there are three other artists on the stage who clearly I don't think have ever performed in a music festival. I've never heard of Badge. That might be a band, but what Groundhog are you talking? Gravy? Shush has performed in Minecraft. Mm, and that is what that's, West, that's true. That's and what can corroborate. <laughs> and oh, you were at the concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and potential mar- uh, potential also alter ego marshmallow has performed on Fortnite. This is true. Hmm. Camden, do you do you care to remove yourself from the stage, or yeah, where are you I'll, at? I'll, the- I'll take myself off. Uh, I, I was not. I've never played a music festival in West Virginia. Hmm. I've never played a music festival outside of Minecraft. Oh, are we trying to see who has actually played in a music festival in West Virginia? Uh, yes. Yes! <laughs> Tim, oh, Tim I, has absolutely not understood the rules of the game. I thought it was come up with your best lineup for <laughs> West Virginia Fest. Oh, no, man. it's Tim. identify the nine real acts who've actually performed and put them on the stage. Oh. Tim, fully misunderstanding and not listening to the rules, but... So, are there any other ones on there that you think might be fake? What is Groundhog Gravy? I think that's fake. I think Groundhog, Groundhog Gravy is fake, too. All okay. right. I'm going to right, squish it up and throw it away. Groundhog Later, Gravy's Groundhog. The table. Uh, I do have someone to replace them with, though. This is what would happen if uh, Childish Gambino and Tyler the Creator, uh, Creator had a baby. Tyler Childers. Uh, is going to be is going to be taking this stage. Uh, I think that's probably a real person who I could see being in very small font at the bottom of a festival uh, flyer. That checks out. I, I thought I just explained this, but the original conceit of the game was that you would go around and share all the names of the acts and decide together who should go on. There. I'm making an executive decision, just like uh, our hero out there. I'm I'm in executive order. Tyler Childers is uh, performing on the stage. Should we right start now. this over? This is insane. <laughs> no, it's working. All right. Do you, Do you agree with Tyler Childers, y'all? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Right? I mean, I don't know. He That's probably cool. he probably has a guitar. Yeah, Tyler Childers sounds just enough like a person's name. It's like kind of hard to pronounce. I would guess that's a real person. I'll concede to Anthony's original intended way to play this game and and tell you all about my my hand here. I have two groups that I know for sure are real <laughs> in, in my extensive travels around the country to various musical events. Two jam bands uh, that I recognize in my hand are Funk You and The Floozies. Mm, Um, It's a shame that Tim won't be able to get into Funk You after his test scores. (laughs) No, I flunked you. Oh, yikes. The rest of my hand that I don't recognize per se uh, include Magnolia Boulevard, Joshua Natto, and Black Garlic. Hmm. Hmm. Black? Okay. I definitely feel like Magnolia Boulevard is a ska band. Okay. Um, But I don't think they would perform in West Virginia. So I I think, first of all, let's put those two jam bands on the stage. Yeah, for sure. You're recognizing those. Who better in a festival, a music festival, than a couple of jam bands, right? Yeah. That's their natural environment. For sure. I I definitely agree with these two jam bands on here. Um, so I think we should maybe make them permanent on the stage. I have two, I have two guys that or two uh, bands that I think are definitely on um, the West Virginia one. Uh, the ones that I don't think are, um, well, maybe I don't know. I'll just read them all. Curly Siskel is what I've got. The Loop Group, Big Something, Tattletale, and then the two things I definitely think are on here are Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band and Peter Pistol and the Ammo. I, those, Why do you think those are real? <laughs> because those are just two very West Virginia names. I I'll, I'll endorse those only because I want those to be real groups so badly. There is no way Peter Pistol and the Ammo is a real band. I'm also going to put Curly Siskel on no! there. Because, 
Because that sounds right, too. I wonder we if have he's go- eight bands on here right now, and like four of them are wildly wrong. Yeah, well, we've got Curly Siskel and then his missing compatriot, Straight e- Ebert. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, so we have eight bands on the stage. We have room for only one more, and it's got to come out of one of the ones that we're not so sure about. Guys, the only piece of paper I have remaining is, it's a a mononym like Cher or Prince. And on mine, it's written Maggie. Hmm, That's my grandma's dog's name. And I know she's not performing any musical events because I think she's dead. Okay, wow. That's a pass. (laughs) That's a pass from me because if I know anything from playing these URL music festivals, it's search engine optimization. <laughs> and no one's going to fucking know who Maggie is. No. Nope. SEO, when you search Maggie, just a spiky-haired little baby. <laughs> hey, that joke didn't suck, suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Camden, what are the few you have left? Is there one that speaks out to you? Black garlic sounds real. Yeah, I yeah, kind of feel that way, too. I also don't know if Anthony would make that name up. This is a valid concern. Hmm. That's my vote out of my hand. Hmm. What you know, do you guys think? So uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll read mine off because I don't think any of mine are real. The loop group. There's no way anybody who's using loop pedals is going to West Virginia. Okay. Interesting take. Big, Understandable. Big something. Again, SEO. Do you remember when we learned about the Mothman's big something in Anthony's story? That's true. <laughs> Not talking about his wings either. I hated that (laughs) portion of the game so much. I just want to remind our listeners that I was put on the spot. Don't worry. You're safe. You can't be canceled. Tim, what is your final one? And then I have Tattletale, which also seems like an actual band name, but SEO. Who's going to come up when you see Tattletale, that weird little hunchback guy from Recess? (laughs) (laughs) I... (laughs) I think this is, I think Tattletail is a pretty good option. Hey, I think, yeah. Sorry, just while we're on the topic of recess. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> just while we're on the topic of recess, is it true that I look like Mikey from recess? <laughs> Absolutely. Is that, is that the guy with the red cap? No, that's uh, Ralph. I think that's Who's PJ. Mikey? PJ. Who's Mikey? Uh, to Anthony's looking it up, and while while he yeah. does that, we should talk about the recess movie where um, <laughs> there's like a laser built in the cafeteria of their school over summer break, and yeah. they play that Three Dog Night song, One is the loneliest numb, and PJ's like alone at home, and everybody else went to fucking summer camp. Mm. When did you last watch this movie? I, How- saw, I think I saw it one time when I was a boy. How the hell do you remember that? I don't know. So if I remember correctly, Mikey is the really big one who wears a <laughs> shirt that's a one size too small. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's got a French yeah. tongue, though. Yeah, that's kind of bad. Yeah. I don't think I look like Mikey from Recess. I'm you kind brought of insulted it up. by that. No, it's something that was used against me. <laughs> wow. Life. Yeah, that Mikey. reads that reads as a roast. Camden, sure. I'm mad at you. Okay. Mikey is like a nice character on that. Yeah, he seems that like a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a hero. He's a, he's like he's a lawful good. You know who sure. I was always uh strangely attracted to as a young boy? Spinelli. Tim's kind oh, of dressed yeah. like Spinelli today. Tim looks like Spinelli. <laughs> I need to know who what Spinelli, Spinelli looks like. Spinelli's the girl in the hat who like is super dominant and badass. There's something yeah. about her personality that really uh she's like if oh, she's like if mm. Double D from Ed Ed and Eddie had like Sass. the goth girlfriend vibe. Ooh, yes. yeah. Yeah. By oh, the way, yeah. Double D. Did, was it ever established as Double D a girl? Oh, mm. they're all they're all Edditors. Yeah, I'm. I think I think her name might be Edie. Uh, okay. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah. You know speaking what? Speaking well, of Edie, that lore goes deep. I wonder how much EDM is in this stage, uh, and uh, maybe the Loop Group. Oh, we threw it out. All right, yeah. we got to figure out who our last thing is. Let's get out of these cartoon fantasies of ours, and uh, let's let's figure out who the last band is. Are we between Black Garlic and um, Tattletail? I guess. Tale? I don't know. I, I I'm personally a fan of Black Garlic. I think that's a real band. I Let's think do it. Black Garlic is really cool, like an Italian metal group. Sure. All right. Cool. All right. 
So check your work. Check your work. See Checking our work. That, see if there are any on there that you, after seeing all of the names, think should be removed. There were tons. Obviously, there are terrible bands on it. Peter Pistol and the Ammo. If that is a real band, I am willing to get on a plane and go find them and straight up mud wrestle them. Think of that SEO, though. You're going to find them instantly. No, you're going to see a bunch of pictures of Pistol Pete Maravich, like, throwing assists to people. It's it's a totally different thing. <laughs> Look, let, all right, so let's risk, list them off. Okay. We have Badge. Yep. Maybe Penn Badgley's band? Mm. Mm, something to think about. Well, Badge is a badger, so. Black Garlic. Tim McGraw. Curry Siskel. Tyler Childers. Peter Pistol and the Ammo. Funk You, The Floozies, and Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. I think we have a pretty good lineup here. I, I, you know, maybe give or take one or two. I think we're good. I what can are, see the flyer right now. Mm, what are the <laughs> odds that Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band was formed after Peyton Manning got confidence from all those Allstate commercials? Yeah, and, <laughs> oh, and, yeah. and did one of those online... <laughs> Uh, priest certifications <laughs> with the Universalist Church. <laughs> Look, Anthony, I think we have a solid lineup. I wouldn't want to change a single one except for about half of them, but we got to know well, how close are we? How many did we get right? Can you please put down looking at the recess IMDB and tell us <laughs> the get results to your game? I'm calculating. What do you mean calculating? <laughs> There's like... Okay. In the meantime, Camden, you and I, I mean... It's been a while, but I think any any recess memories that form in the recesses of your brain? Oh, gosh. Um, was there ever a time you got picked first or maybe last for a sport? Oh, totally. So I was I, I was not a particularly athletic kid, but I was always I was always like pretty, pretty high up in the lineup to be picked for dodgeball. Oh, nice. Because you had an uh, arm because I took dance classes throughout my entirety oh, of, shit. of education. Yeah, through high school. So let me guess, you were doing like some badass Matrix shit, dodging balls left very, and right. I was very live and agile, mm. and I lasted a long time in the game. You were like, mm. you Much were like, like Mothman in An Anthony's story. <laughs> wow. Nice. Lasted long. All right, Anthony, <laughs> nice. with that, you're back in. Can you tell us the yes. results? Guys, you've only got five correct. Jesus. Nice. Wow, Jesus Christ. Tyler Childers, The Floozies, Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band, Funk You, and Black Garlic are all actual performers. Tim Hell McGraw yeah. did not perform there? No, wow. that was a Damn. misdirection. That was, a, so that was a good misdirection. I, I bet Maggie performed, right? Yes. Yeah, I uh, fucking knew wow. it. That one was too easy to not be a thing. I'll you throw need to in rebrand Maggie if you're listening. <laughs> I'll throw in Tattletail as a real one, too. Mm. Incorrect. Not... Damn it. Let's damn. get that out of there. Maggie's correct. I bet um, out of your remaining ones, Camden. Magnolia who... Boulevard? Yes. Mm. So, oh, really? We should have known. Magnolia Boulevard, also on the bill. All right, so we have two more that we have to figure out. I Tim, got... you have a couple left. I got a couple. I got the Loop Group and Big Something. Big Something sounds like a band. And then yeah. I have Joshua Nado. But even though... Uh, we might have some SEO complaints about Big Something. I'm putting my money on Big Something. Wow. Big Something? All big right. Something was a performer. Wow. Yeah. Oh, dang, All right, dang. so we have one more slot, and it seems like Camden really wants it to go to Joshua Nadow. Yeah. The Loop Group just sounds too high-tech. Also, the Loop Group, do you guys remember when uh, Toucan Sam had, like, three sons? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, y'all. It's not Joshua Nadeau. That's Whoa. a name I made up. Instead, it's Wait. Groundhog Gravy. What? Whoa. No way! Oh, shit. <laughs> awesome. Fuck. Yeah. That's a dope name. That's a pretty hard name. Now, and listen up. Where is mm -hmm. Groundhog Gravy? Just to clarify, I, I, Stu crumpled, I crumpled it up because I was so sure that it was made wow. up. <laughs> Uh, just to clarify, these were not all of the acts that were featured at 2019's uh, music festival in West Virginia. You could go look up the full lineup, and there will be another lineup dropping pretty soon. Camden, fingers crossed. Marshmallow? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we've uh, we've explored <laughs> we've explored West Virginia through a fest. We've explored West Virginia through a test. Now it's time to. 
Get ready, because we're about to explore West Virginia in a quest. It's a cool autumn night in the Smoky Mountains. You've just put your child to bed, a constant reminder of your dead spouse that fell off a cliff near your home last year. But your crops are harvested, a bountiful year for a yo person of your stature. The winter will be hard, but not as hard as last year. You've shot your shot. You've harvested many potatoes that night, and you're ready to call it, damping your pipe. You make your way inside and lie your head down on a comfy enough hay cot and extinguish your bedside flame. And the lights are out. In the cloudy shroud of a nightmare, you come to your senses. An unfamiliar, noxious smoke has wandered its way over your tiny swath of the Appalachian Mountains. It has the face of a skull like the one in the film James and the Giant Peach that has yet to be released. Remember, it is 1860. Oh. And then you wake up. An old soldier with a gun has lit a flame your hearth and is polishing its rifle only feet away from you. The soldier is frail, bleeding from the gut, with a peaceful aura around it like death is only an arm's length away. Its breath smells like a dead raccoon when it talks. War is coming from the east. Virginia, a cesspool of rich agriculturists, landowners propped up on slavery, is looking to secede from the Union and take you along with it. What is this? Only you know where you stand. The old soldier leans in like a flesh bag of bones ready to spill and hands you its rifle. This is your opportunity to do what is right. Do you accept the soldier's gun? Oh. Yes. Well, yeah, I guess we do. Is this the, is it a, it's a choose your own adventure? You remember your spouse oh before God, answering it. and you have continued, yes. You leave your child alone that night, alone to fend for themselves. It's three years later. <laughs> May, 1863. The warmth of summer tickles the cool air of the April spring. It's more than windy on the battlefield of Chancellorsville. Hot lead flies over your head or into the mushy and bloated corpse barrier you helped set up the previous night. You haven't seen your child six years old since you left that fateful night three years ago, and the onslaught of Confederate forces gives you pause that maybe this hour is the hour in which you die. There is a quill, ink, and paper to your left in a perfect condition for a letter, and you remember your old address in the mountains as a yo person. Do you write a letter to your child? Yes. Uh, Yeah, I, mm, let's consider this, Anthony. Do we want our last moments to be sending fear? Jesus Christ, that firing is getting (laughs) close. Do we want our last seconds of fear to be transferred to our child? I think that we should show that we didn't leave without thinking of them, but because we were thinking about them. Hmm. Well, okay. I agree. I agree with you. (laughs) I think, I think, yes. You write a letter to your child and beckon the courier over. They take the letter from your hands and you fight like nothing else matters. The soldier's rifle glows red, white, and blue, the colors of freedom, and you single-handedly kill 1,800 actively racist Confederate soldiers with one magical bullet. Despite the battle being lost, you retreat to higher ground and are safe. Incredible. It's 1865. (laughs) Two years later. Spring and summer winds still swirl in the air, but it's much stiller than it was. The Confederacy is on their last legs, and you are known as Union Blue Gun from the fire surrounding your rifle. You're next to Little Sailor's Creek, and you've just stormed the last of the Confederate camps. General Robert E. Lee cowers at the barrel at the end of your rifle, his wretched face illuminated by bright blue light. Your finger is against the trigger, dramatically squishing the skin of your index as you apply pressure to end this fucker's life. But before you can do so, something taps you on the shoulder. You turn around. A young soldier couldn't be more than 10 or 11 years old, extends to you a sealed envelope. 
Robert E. Lee begs for death. You look the little soldier in his eyes and you're not sure whether or not to accept the letter. Do you accept the letter before you pull the trigger? <sighs> okay, Anthony, we've come to another crossroads and I think much like the movie Crossroads with Britney Spears, this could be a disaster. This could be a diversion, you know? <laughs> Obviously, you know, we could open the letter and it says something like sucker and then Robert E. Lee kicks us in the penis. Oh, okay. Uh, also, Robert E. Lee signed, you know, signed the uh, the terms of agreement that ended the war. So True. we do need him alive in order to seal this war closed. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely an argument there to be made that Robert E. Lee's treasonous acts against the United States and the deserve Union death. deserve yeah. death. But what about this? What about uh, torturing him for the rest of his life in a lobster-filled tank at the just just oh. high enough above the waters of Massachusetts for him not to drown? I am curious about this letter, I can't lie. Can we not read the letter after the murder? Or is there a chance that in the letter it says like, Dear boys, it's Abraham Lincoln. I'm not dead yet. It's it's early in 1865, and I want to make sure that you don't kill my undercover brother, Robert E. Lee. Now, what if that happened? Maybe we should find out the contents of this letter just in case they are important. But if we get punched in the penis, <laughs> Stu, yeah. I'm looking your way. Okay, ma'am. Is your answer yes, you look at the letter, or no? Yes, we'll yes, check out the letter. read the letter. You put down your flaming gun and in your Union garb take a disrespectful seat on the Confederate throne. The young soldier looks at you with tears in their eyes. You read the letter, and you yourself burst into tears. The young courier is your child. You are war-torn and battle-shook emotion, and all semblance of family has left your eyes. For the past five years, it's been you, a glowing rifle, an insatiable desire to make sure West Virginia stays in the West. You remember the words you wrote in your letter years prior. They're burned in your head, quote, you are not my child. But the letters you've seen in the page in front of you give you pause, quote, you are not the parent, signed Maury Povich from the future. You dance, Robert E. Lee dies, and you hug your not child as the American flag waves among the smoke and fire. Your rifle turns to ash, and you return home, back to West Virginia, back to your non-child that you still love. And you live the rest of your days knowing that death will come for you anyway, but have found everlasting peace. The end. Okay. okay, what the fuck? What was that? <laughs> what just happened? Why? I, I Okay, there was a moment at the end of Anthony's game when it really went off the rails where I was like, you know, this is a really fun distraction and it can't get any worse than this. What on earth just, what did we just do, Tim? You lived an entire life. You went on a quest, you defeated the Confederacy, and now... You're living your life as a yo person back in West Virginia post-Civil War. Uh, what happened to Robert E. Lee? We, we never <sighs> were told that the war officially ended. That's a really good point. Maybe power was transferred back to a seat in, uh, you know, uh, the South, and now the war rages on. Also, the letter simultaneously said that the child was and was not ours. No, no, let me, let me, that's the, this is a part that I will clarify, unlike any of the other history. The words, you are not my child, that were burned into your head were words that you wrote in the letter two years prior. We didn't choose to write those. We said, let's write a letter. And what we wrote right. in the letter was, I'm disowning you as my son. That is, <laughs> what the th fuck? That is correct. You, not only did you choose, yes, you will pick up the rifle and leave your your child in West Virginia alone to fend for itself with only rations that you picked from the harvest prior but you wrote a letter three years later, finally confirming that you are disowning them. That is definitely not the intention of, the, no. of our story. Well, that was what you guys pick, so I don't know. Wow, I, I, I'm so lost. I truly just feel like this was a, a weird ride full of questions that went nowhere ultimately, much like the show, Lost. Oh, full circle. Unlike Tim's story, which uh, left me feeling confused and empty inside.
You guys were talking earlier about wanting a wanting an actual guest on so that you could be embarrassed by someone. <laughs> I just wanted to say, you guys embarrassed me today. Wow. This is, okay. <laughs> And it's I, only I right. I feel very embarrassed in no. the best way. I feel ba- I feel embarrassed by you guys every record. Let's be <laughs> <right>. <laughs> there are times, Camden, where I'll look over at you in your chair over with all your audio equipment and you're just shaking your head. You're not even doing it at us. You're just doing it alone to yourself. You can't hold that in and I, I respect you for it. Tim? I know that you guys had fun during that one. <laughs> that was pretty I fun. Know, yeah, I know you guys had fun listening to all that fun music and killing Robert E. Lee. Well, I- I'm not going to pretend, even though Camden's going to do a great job in editing, I'm not going to pretend that each sound effect did not take a full two minutes to pipe in. (laughs) Yeah, for the listener, probably seamless. But for us, the worst pair of jeans I've ever had. It was all seams. (laughs) Interminable. (laughs) All right. Well, we probably probably should have invest Virginia in some rehearsal time on that one. <laughs> no. Nope. Nah. I wrote this 15 minutes before. Can't you tell? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So we've explored Vir- West Virginia with a test, with a fest, and with a quest. So it's only natural that we go around in the circle, starting with Anthony, to Camden, to Stuart, then to myself, to talk about how West Virginia makes us feel. Anthony? West Virginia, it's really a shame that we lost that episode with OJ. I can't wait to have him back because I was blown away by how much I had no idea about it with this state. I I really learned a lot, uh, and I do have extensive notes on some very interesting things uh, that I can't wait to get into in the future. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have time for them today, but it is a really, really interesting state with a very interesting history, um, and... You know, they were against seceding uh, along with Virginia, and that's kind of where the split occurred. And for that, I think they deserve tremendous credit. Uh, I think that it still has a lot of growing to do overall. Uh, It it could be much more progressive, certainly, but it is, you know, an an industrious um, and rural state that that is really special and has a lot of natural beauty. Um, I definitely think that I would go there just on vacation to see some of the top five sites, but it's not the most interesting state that we've come across. I can't wait to have OJ back on one day. Camden. As I said, I drove through West Virginia on a couple of occasions. Not too much uh, personal tie to the place. Um, it does border Ohio immediately, on the, right on there on the, on the Ohio River. But I'd like to take my touch segment to talk about some of the political stuff that's going on in West Virginia. The AOC of Appalachia, Paula Jean Swearingen is, uh, has, has been fighting tooth and nail to snag a seat for the, for the state of West Virginia. Um, there's a lot of really shitty shit happening with, um, coal corporations polluting the water there. It's one of the, it's like one of the worst states for clean water. And, uh, she's doing a lot of awesome work. You know, Camden, when you said you had to get into the politics of the state, there was a second where I was worried. And then I remembered that you're not Tim Anthony and I, and you had actual points and references that you (laughs) understood about the local politics. Yeah. So this episode was great. We definitely had to pull a little bit of extra zest Virginia to pull it off. (laughs) Um, But West Virginia, for, for, for those reasons, has a special place in my in my chest, Virginia. Stuart. Almost heaven. No gas, Virginia. The podcast was good and the games all made sense. <laughs> Anthony's game totally worked. Tim's game too. These games really rule. Country roads. Take me home to the place I belong. No guess, Virginia. Three games. <laughs> Take me home. This oh. podcast was good. Oh. West Virginia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, what a hellish place West Virginia has in my heart. After trying so many times for actually recording this episode with an actual person who's from the state, it really did just fall apart so many, so many times. But you know what? In this episode, I I had an amazing time. I had so much fun. You know, the, 
it's this is the best Virginia. And, you know, I'm not discrediting actual Virginia, but man, West Virginia having a fun time in best Virginia. All right. To talk about, you know, more serious stuff. Yeah, it's like one of the poorest states in the in the United States. It's over. It's like absolutely overrun by capitalist greed in terms of coal. The coal industry is setting the, the entire United States and the entire world back into trying to actually fight climate change. And do you know where those coal companies are polluting? It's directly into the Shenandoah River. Nice. Yeah, it's just fucking bullshit. And uh, <sighs> it's a really fucking sad state that technology is st- is stopped there and the people who live there have no other choice but to... Uh, prop it up because it's it's so poor. It it really is a it's a weird mix of it's a weird mix of things and like a problem that just keeps feeding into itself. But we can still have fun with the thing by by looking at it through a test, a fest, and a quest, baby, because it is the best. If you have any questions or concerns about the great fifty states of the states, then reach out to us on Twitter at Statesman Pod, on Facebook and Instagram at Statesman Podcast, or by email at Statesman Podcast at gmail.com. Please like, rate, subscribe, and share the show with your friends and family because that helps the show out a lot. Camden. Thank you so much for being on the fourth mic. You got it, guys. Thank is, you, Camden. Is there anything uh, that you that you can plug other than this podcast that uh, that you'd want to plug? You can follow uh, my my good friend Shush on Instagram and everything else at s h h h makes music. That's an s and three h's makes music. That's where I'm posting up stuff. I make lots of music. I'm throwing shows all the time. Um, Before you go, Camden, do you have anything you'd like to say about your Uncle LeBron's comments on the Hong Kong situation? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Camden. I, <laughs> Camden, I uh, I did a, recently come out to your reset event, and it was a total blast. It was at the sub T basement. There was a giant skull in the background. Camden immediately told me that that was he was not responsible for the giant skull, but he was responsible for a great lineup. Way, way better than the lineup presented at the game segment that I constructed today. And you you really know how to you really know how to run a tight and fun night. And I had an absolute blast. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming out. Uh Anthony Stewart, you got you guys got anything to plug? You're you don't have anything to plug anymore, Anthony, do you? Uh no. By this the time of this episode's release, uh Public Decay of Affection will have closed at Second City. And, and that's the last you'll be performing ever, right? Yep, I'm just gonna walk into Lake Michigan and end it all. <laughs> uh, no, I, I will. Sh- I'm sure that something else will come together. Um, sure will. But, but that was really the most special show I've ever done in my life, and I, I really enjoyed working with that cast every step of the way. And I just feel lucky to have been a part of it. So I can't wait to see what the future holds. Uh, but it's gonna be tough to leave that one behind. But for now, you could follow me on. Twitter at I'm a Rossi. Excellent. Stuart, you got anything to plug? Yeah, of course, as always, my Twitter and my Instagram at Stuart Highcar. Um, both of them constant content every day, just really fucking funny stuff. And you got to follow them both. My Twitter, very public. My Instagram, very private. I also wanted to, uh, oh, <laughs> I also want to, of course, say come out to the crowd theater, see some of these uh, uh, house night Friday nights, 10 o'clock. They're always very fun. I perform in many of them. You'll see my little smiling mustache face. And starting on, I believe, December 11th, you can come to the Annoyance Theater at 8 p.m. and see me in Trigger Happy. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. Dope. A wildly talented cast. Uh, just, I, I seriously have no idea how I tricked them into letting me into this team, but you should come and watch us all absolutely crush. Amazing. Yeah, there would have been a period of time where I would have said, hey, Stu, don't, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. You are one of the funniest people that I've ever met. But after your game today, <laughs> I feel like I'm just up there with you wondering how it happened. Yeah, that made me real depressed, Virginia. Wow. <laughs> Do we have any more est Virginia jokes we could make? Yeah, we. Li- I can't believe that we forgot this. We were supposed to do Virginia where we apply toothpaste on each of one of our individual toothbrushes. Well, there's still enough time. There is still enough time. So I'm applying a nice bit of toothpaste to, mm. uh, and we will have to bleep that out, but you can figure out the rhyming scheme with this one. And by the way, guys, we'll have to bleep this as well, but I'm using one of the best electric travel brushes in the game and it's a podcast. So I gotta say. All right. So let's, uh, let's start brushing our teeth and uh, 
Yeah, I gotta get the bad taste out of my mouth somehow. On behalf of my junior statesman, Anthony Rossi and Stuart Heitkar, I'm your elder statesman, Tim Ferrari, state positive. West Virginia, duh. Brush your tongue. I'm the bad guy. And while you guys are brushing your teeth, Mothman fucking his kids, that's incest, Virginia. <laughs> oh, oh, no! Yeah!